Hey everyone, this is AWS On Air, a weekly show that we do every single Friday, and we've got a really exciting segment for you here. Uh, if you do vehicle routing uh, and it's maybe very manual and you're looking ways to be able to improve the speed and accuracy, well, we've got a really exciting topic on that with the folks from NVIDIA. Moon and Adi are here to be able to share some really cool things that NVIDIA is doing on this very problem. So let's start with merely talking about what vehicle routing is. So uh, uh, Moon, how would you describe to someone who's new to this use case of what vehicle routing is? Of course. Um, so vehicle routing, um, anything, anything that you know you nav the the a vehicle is navigating through the traffic, accident, you know, weather changes, that can be vehicle routing. So for example, one good example is you know, um, I order pizza from uh, whatever local pizza place, pizza house, and uh, nobody wants to have a cold pizza when it's delivered, right? So um, we will help that you know, local pizza house to have the best routing by saying, hey, pick up um, the cheese pizza and the pepperoni pizza for Adi and, you know, drop by Moon's place and then, you know, deliver one pizza at her house. And then on the way, you next stop is going to be Adi's house and then you drop something else. So um, without having to make it um, back and forth to the pizza house. Um, so that's the easiest way I can describe what vehicle routing is. Well, I love that use case. I mean, it's something that everyone can really relate to every single day. Um, but it sounds what's really cool is that there's a lot of other use cases aside from if you're ordering food. Um, so Adi, maybe you can unpack some of the other use cases for vehicle routing that are out there. Sure. So uh, there are different use cases for vehicle routing problems. The main one that Moon just talked about is um, last mile delivery which includes delivering orders from a certain warehouse or distribution center to different locations. Another use case is, dispatch, is uh, pickup and delivery. Um, so a food delivery driver, simil somewhat similarly to the pizza, um, maybe like going to one restaurant to pick up an order, then going to a customer's location to drop it off. So then each driver's route would be like half of the half of them would be pickup locations, like the different restaurants. And then the second half would be drop off locations. And wow. another popular use case is dispatch optimization. So this could be some um, service providers who have to go to a customer's homes to install um, to install something or deliver some uh, maintenance service. Wow, these are really, um, I mean, this fundamental use cases, I would say, to every things that we do in our everyday lives, or at least experience in our everyday lives. And I can imagine that it must be fine if you're just doing it on spreadsheets if it's you just have one customer. But once you have hundreds, thousands, that's where you need something that's really automated and scalable. So uh, let's kind of talk about how Co-Opt can be able to help with that. Um, so Moon, when you're talking to people, uh, how would you describe what Co-op is from NVIDIA. Sure. So NVIDIA Co-op is a world record GPU accelerated optimization AI microservice. So it's a long description. So let me break it down and then um, kind of walk you through what each means. So Co-op uses GPU accelerated logistics solvers relying on heuristics, meta heuristics, and optimizations to calculate com complex feeding uh, vehicle routing problems with a wide range of constraints. So when I say constraints, it could be you know distance, it could be um, climate change, like traffic and all that. Um, also something like um, the lunch break for the driver and so on. So a lot of them can be constraints. You know, with the support for the distance and time metrics, uh, time metrics with asymmetric patterns, um, Co-op can be seamlessly integrated with popular map engines and deployed in any data center um, or cloud. Wow. So now that your people are able to uh, deliver this, um, you know, be able to use this in AWS, make it a lot faster, um, scalable. I think that's really exciting. I'm sure a lot of people are wondering when you said earlier, world record breaking. Um, I'm even curious too, like what that even means. Maybe you can break that down yeah, uh, for us, Moon. So um, from historical um, and engineering perspective, um, in 2021, we released the first version of NVIDIA Co-op. So it was a GPU accelerator operations optimization engine with a focus on the speed to solution. So 
that really unlocked a new use cases for um, operations optimization. And for the first time, gave the users the ability to leverage the dynamic nature of real world data and the power of exploration through simulation. Um, in March this year, earlier this year at GTC, we went a step further. So NVIDIA's co-op holds all of the world records, like 23 of them, wow. were achieved in the last three years and the largest instances of the Gearing and Homburger and Lee and Lim um, benchmarks. Um, what's, what's really cool about um, this improvement is that rather than improving the previous routes, co-op really explored the new regions of their search um, space to find the feasible routes um, that were previously unknown. So the solver combined the GPU parallel computing with the new techniques um, inspired by the natural systems to um, quickly identify the most promising solutions in the search space. So, you know, for the first time, decision making is available with the world's best accuracy in record time. That is fantastic. I'm sure a lot of people would want to be able to see this. So maybe Adi, could you walk us through what uh, a demo is of once the, they, the folks use NVIDIA AI Enterprise, that is a prerequisite, um, which you can use on the AWS marketplace. So once they sign up for that, then they can start using Co-opt and they can go through the steps that you're about to show us. Sure. Yeah. So I'll show you, uh, I'll show you two things. The first one is a very, um, easy way to access co-opt, um, which is on the NVIDIA API catalog. So you can access that co-op demo in your browser. You don't even need NVIDIA AI enterprise licensing. You just need your laptop and some connection oh. to the internet. How exciting. <laughs> and then after that, we'll look at how to deploy co-opt on an, on AWS. So I'll share my screen. And here I'm just going to share a YouTube video. Uh, doing a live demo felt. But it's not just any YouTube video. You're talking over it. You're giving yeah. us in-person commentary. Oh, yeah. So, all right, let's get started. Um, the first demo, like I said, is on NVIDIA API catalog. So you can access this by going to build.nvidia.com and just searching for co-opt in the search bar. So in this demo, we have three use cases. Like I said, we have last mile delivery, pickup and delivery, and dispatch optimization. Uh, right now, I'll just talk about last mile delivery. Um, so let's, again, talk about the example of pizza delivery. So the input data would consist of three data sets. We have orders, vehicle, and depot data sets, as well as the cost matrix. We'll touch upon that in a second. But the orders would basically be the pizza orders, right? So one of the orders would be my order, another order could be Moon's, and so on. So in this data set, uh, in this data set, we have the locations of the orders as well as, oh, I'll go back, as well as the demand. This could be um, like order weight or order volume, um, order start and end time, that's, um, that indicates when it's appropriate to deliver that order. Because if I'm ordering pizza at 5 p.m., I don't want to get my pizza at midnight. Like, that's too late. So that way we can show some um, delivery window of when the service, when the driver can deliver my pizza. Then we have the depot data set. Um, this also includes the location and operating hours. This would just be the pizza restaurants, like where all of the orders um, and vehicles depart from at the end of the day and return to it. Sorry, depart from in the beginning of the day and return to at the end. I've got one quick question here just for the folks who are joining us, because these data sets that I hear in this example, they're all very nice, perfectly clean. And we all know that real data in the wild usually is pretty messy. So before uh, the folks joining us are actually start using NVIDIA Co-opt, should they do their own prep work of cleaning up the data and then inputting it into NVIDIA Co-opt? Yeah, that's a good question. So this is the raw input data. Uh, this is something the user would have to provide on their own. Um, this is whatever data you collect for your industry and your use case. So you would have these sample data, you would have these data sets, then you would have to do some data pre-processing, 
we show the data pre-processing to the left um, underneath task data and fleet data. Uh, if you can see these two um, JSON files, this is the data after it's been pre-processed. So we take our raw data, we do some data pre-processing, we save it to a JSON file. And then basically when we use Coopt, we make an API call where we send this data to Coopt and then in return Coopt, um, the Coopt output includes the optimized routes. So Super let cool. me fast forward here a bit. We have the orders, we have the vehicles. So in this example, we just have, we have different vehicle types as well as different carrying capacities. So then let me just fast forward. We call in Coopt. Um, it's pretty easy. It's just an API call um, where we send the data over to Coopt. We can also play around with the solver time limit like how long we want to let Coopt run for. And then we can look at the output. So we can see here that Coopt found a solution using nine vehicles. So in the raw input data, we have 10 vehicles. So by default, Coopt minimizes the number of vehicles used in the solution. Um, so we can see that not all vehicles are necessary to deliver all of these orders. So because of that, Coopt isn't going to use all of them. And then we can also look at the routes per vehicle. So for example, vehicle seven goes from its depot to order 62, then to order 74 and so on until it returns to its depot. And then something else we've included in this demo is a mapping visualization. So here you can print the routes on a map. So this is the route for vehicle one, then we can look at the route for vehicle two on a map. So next, Let's take a look at how to use Coopt on AWS. So for this, you need to have an NVIDIA AI enterprise subscription. Um, information for that will be linked below. However, you can get a free trial for NVIDIA AI enterprise. You can get a free trial for 90 days. So once you get your NVIDIA AI enterprise license, you can go to AWS, go to Marketplace, and then look for NVIDIA AI Enterprise. For me, I already have my NVIDIA AI Enterprise subscription, so it just pops up here. So I'll click on that, and then I'll go to launch new instance with this NVIDIA AI Enterprise licensing. Here I just go through um, hardware and system configuration, and then I launch my instance. So now after my instance has been successfully launched, I can connect to it. So I just want to call out yeah. from what you just quickly showed, you intentionally selected the P5 instance. So it sounds like you'd recommend for those who are using Coopt in AWS that they would use the P5. Instance. Yeah, yeah. Or the P4D I, I saw as well, Coopt right? is more optimized for some GPUs over others. Mm -hmm. um, so you, need, you need to make sure you use the correct hardware for Coopt. Got it. All right. Yeah. So in here, I open my terminal. I connect it to my VM. And the first thing that I do is that I log in to the um, to nvcr.io. That's the NVIDIA container registry. So I log in. Then I save the, um, the co-op container tag as an environment variable. So co-opt image is just the nvcr.io slash NVIDIA slash co-opt, and then the version of co-opt that I want to run. And then I simply pull the container. So this usually takes a couple of minutes. So we just fast forward in this video. And then ooh, that was quick. Let me go back. Okay. And then I just run the container. So I just do Docker run and then the container that I pulled using the co-opt image variable. So here co-opt is already running based on this output, looks good to me. So then I open another um, terminal window, I connect to the same VM and now I can make a sample um, API call. So here I have my curl command so I connect to um, the local co-op service that I have set up. I have some sample data. 
I send it all over to Coopt. And if you can see the last two lines in this terminal, we have the solver response, which basically includes the optimized routes that Coopt has returned. And wow. like you said, you can go to the NVIDIA API um, catalog. Um, you can do it right now if you want um, and look at the demo yourself. I, I think that's really exciting. It showed just really how simple it was to be able to get started um, way better than doing things manually. So where is it that people can go if they want to um, get started with Coopt and any events that are coming up where they can meet some of the folks at NVIDIA? Um, so there's going to be a conference called Informs um, in October 21st. Yeah, in Seattle. So um, there's going to be usually, you know, last year there were, you know, 6,000 people, 800 sessions and the presentation over uh, from over 100 organizations. And we will have several of our engineers from NVIDIA who will have an in-person session there to talk more about the, you know, new feature that we uh, are going to launch at the end of the year. Um, so stay tuned. 